And uh, most of my time uh, as an animator has been uh, with DreamWorks in one form or the other. I would say uh, prior to being an animator, I have like about five years of experience in, uh, you know, I was a generalist uh, doing bits and pieces of everything. We had a startup uh, in India, in my hometown, Bangalore. Uh, so yeah, I've been into character animation for 13 years and um, uh, I was for a brief while at Frame Store as well, like um, around 2016-ish, I think for a year and a half or maybe a couple of years. Um, and then I came back to uh, DreamWorks in LA. So uh, yeah, um, I've been fortunate to have worked on some really cool projects, uh, some amazing talented artists, um, getting inspired by their work. And um, my recent movies include, I uh, was fortunate to work on both bad guys as well as Puss in Boots. Uh, but besides that, I was, uh, in the past, I was uh, uh, on Kung Fu Panda 3, uh, Madagascar 3, Penguins of Madagascar, uh, I was also a supervisor on the first Trolls movie. So, yeah, that's a short. Uh, You're a supervisor on the India. Yes, yes. I was overseeing the, the India unit nice. uh, when I was there in India. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, we can watch a little bit of your shots here. I first want to play the bad guys animation reel because I remember seeing your shots when you started and I was just like, oh man, that's so good. And we work together briefly on bad guys. So let's take a look. smirk off the governor's fuzzy face than stealing the golden dolphin from right under her whiskers. This is the holy grail of thievery. If we pull this off, we'll cement our legacy as the greatest criminals of all time. Okay, I'm game, but only because it's you, Professor. No! We'll hold on to the dolphin until the gala, just to remove any unnecessary temptation. That's it. Spit hey. them out! Ah. Ah. We gonna save you whether you like it or not. Save me, you stupid hairballs! Not that door, the other door! Hey, hey, hey! Come There is no us. We're through, Wolf. Done. Finito. Because of that little tip back there? Come on, man, that's what we do. You serve, I volley. That's our little dance. Not this time. Pretty much, yeah. You see, I never cared about what's good. Only what's good for me. Like, say, a billion dollars. Ooh. I just got a tingle. <laughs> go bad or go home. Nice. Cuddle. Finish then. Yeah, it's... The reel is insane. I love this first shot that you open with the car. And, like, they're going over... It's it's just crazy how like how complex it looks everything how how do you do it like tracking everything that's happening and oh that one was crazy um, I think I, re I remember it was uh, towards the second half of our production and almost close to the finish line of the project and uh, you know that's when things get really crazy <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, um, uh, we had to. Um, mime the uh, the feeling of them them being the the, the what, what are those guinea pig uh, yeah the the um, so there was this kind of a system that we built where um, we had to mime those uh, guinea pigs on the bridge and um, it had to um, sync up with what what fx was doing so uh, what we ended up doing was that we created a tentacle based system and uh, i actually constrained the car to be moving on the, on the tentacle basically what you're seeing there is like that huge tentacle on which the car is going so everything that you see there is all like uh, you know managed in a way that uh, it was it was a little crazy because you know i had to do a lot of back and forth with fx uh, trying to make sure that they're getting the right um, animation and it is workable for them uh, so that part was technically challenging but uh, in terms of animation, I think uh, the energy is what it, 
uh, really required like you know that franticness and uh, if you see some of those shots with wolf um, there's a lot of action a lot of movement happening like this the car moving and the characters inside and uh, um, and at the same time it had to communicate uh, you know their uh, uh, them wanting to really help their friend snake um, yeah. that was kind of uh, tricky and I also added uh, a few things that I don't know people noticed like you know like these guinea pigs flying off and there's one flying out of shark's mouth yeah <laughs> and I, I uh, noticed that yeah and then we then cut to this uh cool shot with wolf uh, you know which is with his uh badass expression like he's like revving up the engine and then mm -hmm. um yeah uh, i think on such shots um the energy is something that uh, is super important because uh it's it's easy for you to make it work in one shot but then it needs to carry on through the whole section yeah. and sometimes when you're working in isolation it kind of you kind of tend to miss out on that so that was one thing that was challenging um and um and also uh with these cuts it's very important to direct the the eyes of the viewers like you know if your action is happening other than the center you can you can miss it easily so you needed to cut it cut to the characters in a way that you know you don't miss out of the action and everything is um, you know registered properly and so, yeah. did you tweak the camera a lot on this sequence, a lot or? a lot yeah yeah yeah, because I'm wondering, coming from layout, is yeah. not going to have the same energy and the same flow you, you want to? Yeah, I almost, uh, these days, almost uh, look at the layout camera as a placeholder. And in many times, many times in production, they kind of uh, position the camera or maybe even animate it like a placeholder. Like, you know, it's just a very indicative uh, approach to the camera. Um, and they also kind of know that we as animators are going to be adding ideas based on which the camera is going to change. So I just went, you know, I I questioned the camera right away. I mean, I don't, I, I do an anim camera. I, did, I do my own version of the camera and I pitch it to my supervisor to see if that is working fine. And then, um, you know, usually uh, I like to tie it to the actions that I have in my animation. So that's one thing that I do because the very first or the second shot that uh, we cut into is the, the shot where the camera is going sideways with the car and then it starts to follow and you know the car is going through uh, the guinea pigs um so that part really required the camera to work well with the animation that i had so for sure uh, not just that i think uh, a couple of others that followed as well i yeah. had to change the camera to get it to work with the animation no that's really cool and i wanna play now the heist gone wrong shot progression because Prashant, I remember when I was in studio, Prashant just gets like the crazy stuff. And on Boss Baby, it was just like all those crazy complex shots. And always, it's like so impressive how good it looks. So let's take Thank a look you, at man. the shot progression. And then we can talk a little bit about how you approach it. Sure. Them out. Them out. It's nice that you added the slow motion take. Oh, uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe you're seeing it through a different source. I mean, I don't oh, remember. yeah, I, I'm seeing YouTube. <laughs> yes, maybe okay, someone that's added. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing on this YouTube channel, but yeah, on this progression, it, it's it's funny because like a small shot, but we can see what you just said about the layout. The layout's pretty different than the an anim cam, yeah. and we can notice on the first pass, and then the them out. and the first like animation, like staging pass. Yeah, and and I like how your staging conveys all the blocking as well, which is pretty cool. But do you have anything specific on those on those shots there? Um, well, again, yeah, um, that's another good example. I think on bad guys, uh, more or less, a lot of these action shots required us to rethink staging and um, adding dynamism to whatever we do. So this is all, uh, you know, uh, to make it look more energetic. Uh, and it starts with the camera. 
as well as the idea that you have. So I felt that uh, when you look at the layout pass, you'll see that uh, Wolf uh, just comes in and picks up Snake to where the, the place where he is and he starts swinging. But I felt it would be cool if he kind of uses the, the room um, of that place that he, they were in. Um, and so he kind of, that kind of gives me that room for him to pull Snake to the side and start swinging. And I utilize that room to swing Snake rather than just having him, you know, just approach and then just lift him up where he was. Uh, so that was the whole thought behind it. And uh, with that idea, I felt it would be good to have him like zip across the screen and then have the camera follow. And as I do that, I kind of uh, am tempted to try these dynamic angles where, you know, you have a slight tilt to the camera and it goes almost close to the ground and uh, it captures the action. So that was uh, something that I went for. I mean, I uh, my, my staging or blocking or whatever I showed initially, uh, already had that camera and I just pitched the shot the way it was because you know to me I just wanted to sell the movement not actually the camera or the animation specifically um, and it worked pretty well um, though my staging pass lacked the energy on, in Wolf. Um, I then later on uh, really decided that uh, the, the, the swinging could benefit from a little bit of energy so instead of having a very uniform circular path I kind of favored the extreme so you see him zip uh, back and forth and not really uniformly circular. So that kind of gives me more energy, like I'm really holding onto poses like from one to the other. Um, and Wolf kind of complements that as well. So it gave me that um, um, that room to make him more snappy as well. Um, and when, I, when, when, it, when it becomes snappy is when you start to pay attention to the poses. And I really wanted to get some really, um, you know, well-crafted poses in there. Uh, on, on Wolf, because, you know, uh, eventually what we were trying to get is like this illustration kind of a feel to this whole movie. So uh, that was my attempt in trying to get closer to that. Um, I think, yeah, this shot was more technically challenging as well. In yeah. Anyways, uh, like with the snake constraining and all that. I have a, a very simple, dumb question. Did you also animate the other characters like Shark and Piranha? Like yes, the, those know? guys, yes, I did. <laughs> It's funny because none of those uh, of the steps you showed, you showed these characters, and then they're just like all good to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've hidden all the. Yeah, I should have actually included them, but uh, most of my uh, initial passes didn't have anything on them, to be honest, because you know they were just standing there, and uh, it was. And wait, um, perhaps the thought was also that you know we don't see all of them at the door at that point in time. And then there was a, an afterthought that, you know, you should include them. Mm. Uh, so they start getting into the room yeah. and starting to. Um, so, yeah, maybe that was a reason. Or even if I had those characters, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have blocked them right away. Because, you know, <laughs> uh, it was a little too much. Uh, all this crazy technical stuff going on. And, and I knew even the, the soups and the, the head of animation were, were not very keen on those guys in the background. But eventually I had to make sure that they work. So I showed them towards the second half of my progression. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I see it. Cool. Let's take a look at your Puss in Woods shot. The, the panic attack from Puss. It's an amazing shot. Let's play and then you can talk a little bit about it. Sure. Yeah, I remember seeing this one in theaters and it's sort of like a very intense section of the movie and it really grabs you. Uh, do you have like anything you want to share about like how was to animate this? I see like you change camera in some of the parts and but it's a, a lot about like the rhythm and stuff. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I was very fortunate to work on this section and also to see the uh, amazing response it's got on social media. Um, so many people being able to relate to it on, you know, so many different levels. Um, when I uh, was cast on these shots, uh, to be honest, it was like a, a sort of a breather because, you know, I had just come out of a very stre strenuous 
set of shots with with multiple characters and uh, physicality and stuff like that. So this was uh, relatively easier to animate in a way because you know it doesn't have much of uh, you know physical movements and stuff like that. Um, so um, I think uh, the 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 beauty of this particular portion is that uh, it was written so well that you know everything that happened in the movie before this point in time leads into this beat push uh, you know uh, being um, uh, having these encounters with Will for beat Pero wanting to be the, the therapy dog I think all kind of merges into this one moment I didn't have to think much in terms of adding ideas to the section because you know it was right there I just had to animate it was a direct moment no subtext on push and no subtext on subtext on Pero, so that made it much more easier. So you'll see that uh, Puss, I really focused on his expression, and um, you know the the library on uh, Puss was like super, like one of the most robust libraries I've I've worked on, to be honest. And um, I had to tweak it a little bit to get it to look like he was panicking. There was also a note from the directors that he should be looking up to the skies, and it kind of added to his whole expression. And there was this whole breathing thing that I needed to add, and you know. Of course, we do have breathing controls, but I had to offset the breathing in a way that it's subtle. So not everything happens at the same time. You'll see a slight delay with his shoulders and his chest and his head uh, to add that sense of believability. Um, and also I had to, uh, you know, avoid the feeling of it looking like a cycle. So you'll see that the places where I've added, you know, slight small micro beats and uh, things to keep it away from that cyclic kind of a feel. And uh, Pero uh, had to look helpless, and you know he was like, you know, I mean, he didn't really know how to handle the situation. He didn't really know what he was capable of, and uh, you see that hesitation in him before he plans. And um, I went for that swoop in his chin, almost to make it feel like it's like a, a healing sort of a touch uh, when he puts his chin on the on puss, um, and he, he closes his eyes. He really feels it. Um, yeah, I mean, I added a lot of these micro movements, like you know, clenches and small twitches and pulls, and and towards the end, you see him exhale, um, and that was that was kind of interesting because it was not in the audio. At the very end, you hear Puss saying, Phew. "So that beat was not actually there," and um, I included that in the animation because I felt it was a good way for him to finish what um, you know he, for him to come out of the panic attack. So the final exhale and probably a lick of his lips or something. So uh, the, director, the directors liked it a lot. And so they decided to retain it and they added the audio and it plays even more better with the audio. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was fun altogether. Man. And I, I mean, we all liked the shot when it was done, but none of us imagined it would become this popular amongst people like, you know, saying, hey, this is so realistic. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, yeah, I really like because, like you said, w like working on on the production, you, when you get shots like this, kind of like, <clears throat> oh, finally nothing crazy. <laughs> it's easier, but it's not actually easier because yeah. there's so much subtlety, and I love like all the micro details you put that you need to watch a thousand times to notice. Like even Pero, like looking around and like small step, another small step, and then like how the looks are like sharp and then they're a little softer and how you play with the rhythm of like sharp and soft and how yeah. he blinks he blinks is low but it doesn't look floaty it doesn't look like he's sleepy it looks like everything looks very intentional which for me is like harder to achieve in like an animation standpoint but when you're on a production like this you're like i'd rather do this than like another crazy jumping and snake i remember snake on bad guys it's just like Oh my god, if you need to do Snake, it's like two shots, not just one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Snake was super hard. But I do, I kind of do agree with you on that. Um, and uh, I always like these contrasts when it, you know, when it's thrown at you. Like, like I was telling you, I came off a very strenuous bit and then this was like super calm. And uh, it's a subtle movement and it can get very subjective, I feel like. Yeah. You know, like your soup might think of it in a different way and the directors might think of it in a different way. And these eye darts are like... Uh, it's very, very crazy. Like, you know, like one eye dart in a different direction can mean something else to, you know, yeah, the other it's, person. It's so, so, so on these shots, if you get it right, you get it right, right away. If not, it's going to be forever. <laughs> it's going to take a long time. It's not yeah. that uh, 
the shot is turning out bad. It's just that everybody has a collective opinion and you're trying to navigate through all of that to get to the final product. So, yeah, I mean, I've had experiences, uh, uh, both, yeah, both those kind of experiences. Your shots yeah. on Boss Baby too as well, when Tabat is hugging Timmy in, in the end. Oh, yeah. And that's also very like emotional and it's like really nice. And you also nail like, yeah, that's what I, I like about Prashant's work. I mean, you guys are seeing, of course, but he does like all the crazy complicated technical stuff. And then the very subtle, it's like a really hard skill because you should see animators like better at something and better at another thing, but he just does everything really good. So that's- Thanks amazing. man, that's really kind of you. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know that there's so many things, things that I need to, improve on and uh, i can see so many things that probably don't work <laughs> but it's really kind of you to say that thank you yeah i'll i'll go back here to our questions now we got some questions from from people on instagram from people on patreon and we have some questions on the chat as well let's just go through the chat right now do those micro movements in other layer do you do those micro movements in another layer after polish or you do it like together as you're working this from juan um so we don't have layers in primo yeah <laughs> and uh that's a kind of a bummer i don't know i mean if it's a bummer i don't know i'm, I'm kind of used to working in working this way yeah uh, so we there are no additional layers for us to add um our animation on it's all going to be on uh, although we do have uh a secondary control on the head, the shoulder, and the body. So the rotate and the the translate have got a secondary control, like we call it head 2T and head 2R. Yeah, um, that's kind of know. like simulating putting yeah. the head, shoulder, and chest on a different layer. Yeah. yeah. So it's like two controllers. Yeah. I usually use them, um, the secondary control, uh, to layer in something. Let's say there's a walk, and then the character is performing something. So I'll probably use those layers, like have the walk in one layer and then have the performance. But that's about what we have, just two layers, if, you, if you're looking at, if you're talking in terms of layers. Um, but in terms of those micro movements, it was all um, on the main control, because I think it was easier for me to manage that way as well. And it is not something that I added in Polish. It was there right from the beginning. Like, I, I want to add all of those ideas right in the beginning and you know, not save them for the later part. Because, you know, if it's too rough in the initial stages, it can be pulled in a lot of different directions. So yeah. there, there are places where you got to be like, you know, hey, this is what it is. Um, and even though you may you may say that, okay, I'm going to add things later on. I have an idea for what's going to add, what's going to come later on. Uh, the people who are watching it might not really be able to connect with it. So it, sometimes I feel that it's good to add those details right away. Um, in a way that you can manage it. So in this case, yes, I added all of that. In the main I, yeah, I totally agree with that. And I keep repeating, like whenever a student shows me a shot or I see something that I'm like supervising or something, it's like, it's better to show everything you want to sell than just like put something there and tell me like, oh, but I'm going to do this, but I'm going to, yeah. you're going to like open up too much for the yeah. director and the supervisor to put their ideas and maybe Absolutely. they they agree with your idea, but they didn't see yet. So you're just like missing the opportunity, and then you're gonna be. But at the same time, if they don't agree, you did more work, and you're gonna have to redo. So Absolutely. they're like the two sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kilabi asks if you still have blocking first pass, second pass, etc. Will be appreciated if you share it, if you could share it. Um, on this one, perhaps at some point in time. I don't have them ready right now. But, oh no! Yeah, uh, in, in the future, because yeah, I would say on these shots, um, it wouldn't. You wouldn't see that vast amount of improvement. You would prob you probably see that in terms of uh, polish in the way, um, in the way you know, uh, the secondary controls are moving. Um, but when I blocked these out, it was not in stepped. I I most I mostly don't use stepped when I block. Um, I use. Uh, um, clamped tangents that we have in Primo. And uh, uh, it's it doesn't mean to say that I spline it right away, but it's the same idea of step blocking, but I'm using you know clamped tangents. So yeah. that way I get a sense of uh, what the whole motion is going to look like. And this also um, kind of uh, came about because uh, some of the directors that I've worked in the past, 
uh, weren't able to process step blocking as well. So um, it, especially since uh, I was working from India for like what eight years, like we had we had that unit in India, and we had to communicate our ideas to the directors here in Glendale. And you know, um, at times it was helpful for us to uh, show it in clamped because you know, step blocking um, it can be misinterpreted sometimes by the directors. Yeah. So they don't really understand. Thankfully, these days, like you know, everybody's well aware of what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, to answer that, like I, I, you wouldn't see as much of a change from my uh, first pass to polish. I would say, because uh, I think around first pass is when I would probably have gotten to the eighty percent mark, and then polish would be just adding those last twenty percent. Like you know, when puss, you see puss uh, uh, lying back, you see his feet moving slightly. So those would be added in the polish pass. Or you know, um, yeah, minor so movements. You don't notice. <laughs> yeah, uh, the small movements in Puss's feet you see are on peril. Uh, those would have you know probably come towards the very end. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, also, on the tart ask: Do you ever that you did drawing fast to help with your staging and poses? On action charts, uh, well, of course. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a two, trained two D artist. I am pretty sloppy with the way I draw, but I know how to draw in a way that it can help me out. So I definitely, definitely do draw when it comes to um, figuring out, uh, you know, some physicality. Um, and I just, it can be just as rough as like lines, you know, with just a circle, just indicating where the head is and what the line of action of the body is. Uh, just that itself is a great help sometimes. And then, and then I go there and, you know, Two more lines to indicate the arms you know i'm just uh, uh, i just make up my you know my own doodles that way um nothing in detail though uh, and i use them only for physicality shots not for acting or um, um yeah i mean if it has to be a pose that i need really need to hold a, a cartoony pose then i would probably try to think my way through it like you know draw and do a rough doodle uh, I, I have a poses. question about this this shot that we just watched it because i feel like a lot of students they're very attached to like video reference and i saw that you didn't post any video reference did do you usually shoot video reference or how do you approach video reference um there is always this conflict in me and um, i'm not really um you know endorsing this thought but um I always like to make my. Uh, I, I always like to keep my brain thinking about what I'm doing as well, than actually uh, switching it off and, you know, relying a lot on reference. I do shoot reference, and uh, and to me, I kind of uh, figure out most of uh, my bits while I'm shooting the reference, and by the time I finish the reference, I have a clear enough idea of what the shot needs to look like. So many times it happened that. I shoot reference for about an hour and I come back, I have all the footage, different takes, but then I just start blocking. I don't <laughs> look at it. <laughs> you don't even watch I, the references. Just... Cause I don't know something about, uh, when your brain starts to really think and it starts to really uh, construct, uh, what the shot needs to look like. I think you should just, just follow it. Like, you know, just go with it, not to undermine the importance of reference. I do use references as well. Like, cause to me, it's very important as to how my character, um, emotes and what's the kind of range that I need to have. Is he starting forward and then is he going back or, you know, what's the texture that I'm going to add and things like these. Um, on Puss in Boots, though, um, it's a show that where, where I really use reference a lot more because they, they were more grounded characters and more realistic moments. Although Puss in Boots is a lot more caricature than what it used to be in the past. Um, but on something like Bad Guys, I find it really hard to use my reference because A, um, I do should reference my, I come from a different cultural background because, you know, my gestures are a lot more different. I might end up, you know, using gestures that might be a little uh, yeah. necessary. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, uh, um, I, uh, you know, the energy of the movement really requires you to move in a way that my body cannot really do that. So sometimes I can act uh, well in my mind uh, compared to how my body can do. So, but I always have that balance. Like I don't want to swing on, you know, onto one side excessively. It's dangerous to not rely on reference 
and it's dangerous to you know rely too much on reference so it's always a balance and i kind of keep it open like you know just take it organically shot by shot it keeps the process interesting as well like it, it's not repetitive yeah i agree yeah. with that. that that's a very good point i'm gonna go Thank over you. those two questions and then we're gonna go for the pre sent questions so adriana is asking when a project shot from the boards how often you how often then so would you go to the actors like antonio banderas iconic films and see his character traits like on mask of zorro for example in order to get the sense of the actor's personality um yes when I, when it's uh, when you have these iconic moments i think it really requires you to um, refer to you know like zorro or something like that um but i have to be honest because in production you don't have as much time yeah, um I was say. and yeah it it more or less ends up being like you know uh, to give you an example, like you would be wrapping up shots um, on, let's say, a Friday, and uh, you'd be cast on new shots on Monday, and then you'd sometimes not even have an idea as to what they are. Towards the very end of a show, of a show, you will not have an idea as to what those shots are. Um, ideally, what happens in DreamWorks is that you kind of get to know your shots perhaps a week beforehand, and you can probably start to have your first round of discussions with your soup, and then maybe discuss ideas like these. Hey, I'm looking at these references, and uh, let's check out this one. So uh, it's kind of still strenuous because you're still polishing your bits, and you have to do this in parallel. Uh, but it gets a little tricky uh, towards the end of the show where you, know, you're, you don't really have that time to know what the shots are. So more often, it's the case where when, you know, you're, you're launching a shot on a Monday and you've got to start looking for reference and start blocking and, and you know, acting out reference. So um, I would be very, I mean, I would still look for it. If it's an iconic moment, you probably would be launched with that thought. The directors would say, hey, you know what? This is a moment like in that Zorro, like, you know, you can refer to some of that. So that is directly uh, relate to me and I can right away uh, think of that um, before I start blocking. Uh, but for other shots, I would say it's hard, like, you know, I would shoot reference and I would, uh, you know, uh, try to see if I can um, get it. Uh, of course, we have these lipstick camps where we have the footage of the voice actors uh, who are voicing out the lines. So that definitely helps. Yeah. So if there's, uh, you know, any of these popular actors, you can get to see them, um, you know, voicing out the dialogue. So. That definitely helps, uh, and you can kind of feel the intensity in the delivery. Uh, but for that, it's a little tricky. Yeah, no, that's that's a very good point. I I agree because I remember when I started on Bad Guys, I was like trying to watch the movies that were like similar personality to the Wolf and the main characters. But after we're in production, I think the pre-production work they do on on like a DreamWorks, for example, shows a lot of the personality of the characters. Yes, that that's where they rely. explore more. Yeah, you can rely more on that other than just like having to do all of this yourself. Yes, Especially yes, and I think production you have to just like start yeah. doing. Yeah, and I think we have excess of excess information in the wiki as well. Like we have a wiki page where uh, we have information of all these characters that we're going to be animating, the the style in which we need to animate them, and their yeah. traits and um, tips on the rigs and the usage. So all of that should you know. Uh, will kind of suffice in a way, uh, but for sure these iconic moments will need such references. Uh, I have a question from Andreon. Have you ever had an experience where you were on a super complicated shot and they were pressuring you to show, but the shot doesn't have all the ideas in yet that you want to present for first pass? How do you handle that? Um, at DreamWorks, thankfully, no. Touch wood. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, they really value... Uh, um, an artist's, uh, you know, his time, and they really uh, respect you for, you know, uh, what you bring to the table, and they know it takes time. So if my first pass is not ready, I can tell them, hey, uh, I need some more time, and they will accommodate that for you. Uh, but of course, there's a line, like, you know, you cannot, um, kind of, you cannot do that almost all the times. So they can understand if it's a very complex shot, you'll definitely need more time. And they kind of factor it, factor uh, factor all of that when they cast you on the shot to an extent, I would say. 
but then there is always these technicalities that arise that you know it, you can really never guess when so a dream works thankfully you no know, but um, i don't want to sound like i'm like uh, saying something uh, against uh, my time in VFX, but in VFX, unfortunately, the production um, is a sort of, uh, you know, that's the kind of way everybody works there, because the client needs to see updates regularly, and uh, even though you're not in a good spot to show something, and it's like technically challenging, you will need to still somehow mock up something, and you're gonna really kick yourself. Uh, because you would be doing some half measures and showing something that's just for the sake of showing, but you know there are technicalities that you're kind of trying to hide. And then you probably have to undo all of that and do it the right way. So I've been through that. Like I had a, a tough time on Mowgli. Uh, there were a lot of technicalities. I, I animated, animated the fight between Bagheera and Baloo. Uh, there was a lot of interaction and my lead uh, wanted it to uh, be animated in a particular way and then um, it was tricky because you know I had to really adapt myself to his way of thinking at the same time uh, show up my shots regularly for updates uh, you would get notes from the supervisor VFX supervisor as well your animation director um, yeah uh, thankfully not as much I mean I don't mean to say this uh, in any way to say that you know feature animation is um, comfortable uh, com yeah. compared to VFX sort of a thing, no, but thankfully at DreamWorks have not faced that. Uh, but of course, like in the past, yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, so questions from the previous, previously sent questions. So Adriano had a question. What was it like to animate the wolf rig? He was my favorite character in the movie. And follow up question. How was your acting approach and what influence did you have from film or stage performance that really conveyed the character? I think that's similar question to the Zorro the Adriana just asked. So Yeah, so uh, on Wolf, um, was it the was it the, the was the question how, on how acting? was it uh, animating it and how was the acting approach? Like how was the rig? Uh, yeah, Wolf was uh, to be honest, it was one of the last rigs that were ready to animate to be honest i mean well was it uh, i kind of forget because i was not in the beginning of the show i may be wrong but uh, he kind of started to come into production uh, towards the second half i would say and uh, i think i love the way wolf is everything about wolf his the intimidating presence of wolf comes across because he's always in the center of frame in many of the shots and he's looking dead straight like you know like squared up to camera and that's kind of what makes him super intimidating and uh, i think that's uh, a conscious effort uh, from all the animators and the leads in the soup uh, so that he does very minimal at the same time he looks very threatening um i animated um i animated the fight in the very end uh, not all of it but uh, a chunk of the fight and um, it's the part where he's like bashing up goes like he zips towards him and then he's like you know and then puss tumbles over and then wolf is like you seem to you should stop losing that thing uh or something as that sort so till that section was mine and um, i had super fun with him um um the tricky thing with wolf was that uh, he's wearing these black robes and it's hard to see his um uh, his geometry like you know his the silhouette of who he is because uh, you almost will, will never see that in the movie because you know it's always covered by the robes but while posing him you need to consider certain things for the line of action and things like that so uh, we did a pass but then uh, you'll almost never see that in the final render so that was one tricky part with wolf um, in terms of his face it's always tricky with his long snout i would say yeah. and uh, to get certain of the expressions to read so we always have you know, there are shots where you you kind of read that from the side. Um, but um, I would say um, Wolf overall, um, um, I think we had to really highlight his red eyes. So you won't see as much of asymmetry on Wolf. If you see, it's like very little of asymmetry, but you'll almost see that, you know, his eyes are almost wide and round. And that was also a visual thing that we went for, like his eyes being like red. and. Uh, sort of shows up in lighting. Um, 
yeah, I, I probably will sh share some of um, my fight sequences sometime. Um, nice. we're, yeah. we're excited to see. I Talking about that, I have a question. My question, now going through the list. Uh, how was the decision? I thought I was very curious that the fight sequence, some of the stuff were on choose, like uh, with this like uh, Spider-Verse stop motion kind of look. Right. And, but the movie itself was polished on, on once with like a very fine detail polish like we just saw in your shot. How was the decision to do that? Because I, I feel like people would think the opposite, like, oh, fast movements, you're going to put more friends, so do it on once. And then when it's not fast movements, you just do it on choose because you don't need as much information. And how was to work? Was it like on choose? It was like a variable you could hold like three, four frames and put some stuff on once. How was like all this this process? Um, it was mainly on twos. I don't know if people tried. I think there were a few shots um, when um, you know in the forest when they have this big standoff, like when Jack Horner comes in, when Goldie comes in, then they have this big fight. There probably were a few shots that were in threes, if I'm not mistaken, but um, I think almost consistently through the movie it was all twos. Um, and uh, the approach was uh, uh, like how you would approach uh, any other normal shot because I went about animating everything normally uh, like I would do in once. But then we had this control, uh, one control in the character. There's a timing control and then where you can switch between the, the different frame rates. So you will see that uh, you can make it in ones and you can make it in twos. Um, so what usually used to happen is, in my case at least, what I did was that I didn't rely too much on that. Once I had all of my animation, I started to key everything, um, select everything, select all, and then key in twos. And then I just started to delete the frames in between. So, you know, of course, you had the animation that was playing in twos, but then it starts to jar with the camera because, you know, when your camera moves and your character in the same position, it starts to jar. So we had this tool called um, Step Camera or something, I don't remember. Uh, where uh, what that would do is that it would spit out values on your uh, your character's um, global or all control. Um, I don't know what yeah, yeah, people the, call it. The mind. main global. The main control. So that way it stays with the camera in the held frame so you don't see it jar. So that kind of helped us through that, that portion. So, but, but most importantly, what this helped me with is that on shots where it was twos, it really helped me focus on each of those images as like you know drawings and really go and really sculpt them because there were some really sharp and like very um, rapid moves and you could really sculpt them out um, like you know like a standalone drawing and make sure it works with the, the surrounding ones as well so that really was enjoyable I like doing that and there was one shot where push tumbles where um, I kind of went straight ahead because I loved doing that I did some drawers like I was telling you, these are like uh, rough drawers. Like, and uh, I did that first before I blocked it out, and then I just followed that. I just went straight ahead, and that was a fun process. It turned out pretty well as well. Um, and then it really gave me that room to sculpt the poses. So if you if you pause in any of the of those frames, it still makes sense, and it's not like yeah. some in between pose which doesn't have any meaning. Yeah, no, that's yeah. cool. I hope you shared those shots in the future so we can take a look at it sure uh kila asked do you take any inspiration or study from anime or other very very limited styles when planning out lower frame rate scenes and do working this way end up taking more time or less time than usual um and it does take up a little more time i would say for sure because uh, after you're done with uh, your regular animation um Accepting this is accepting the push shot that I did on all of the shots. I was just animating the way I would animate a regular shot and then turn them into step So it has an extra additional layer of you know turning um, When you put something into step not all your in-betweens and your breakdowns uh, are going to look meaningful So it's for you to go in there and make all of those images work really well and sculpt them out in a way So it's a little bit more work. Uh, I did refer to a lot of I mean, we did have some references, anime reference. I think Sword and the Stranger, uh, Sword of the Stranger, or uh, I remember what I don't remember what was it, that movie. So, 
Sword of the Stra Stranger, I think, and then uh, the, uh, the the God of High School or something. Um, I, I kind of forget what it was, but uh, we did go through some of the references to get these uh, the energy of these fights with the staff, especially because mine was the portion where um, after Wolf joins his sickles into the staff, he charges at Puss. So I had to refer to some footages um, to try to get them to, you know, try to incorporate them into my work. Cool. So, yeah. Was there anything that surprised you or threw off the team in production because of this different style of the lower frame rates? Oh, sorry, what's the question? Was, was... was there anything that surprised you or the team like during the production because of this different like lower frame rate style? Or it was just... No, I mean, I think it was planned pretty well. And I think uh, most of the action sequences kind of break into those tools. Um, except for the bits that we deliberately didn't want to. Uh, there's one, one portion where uh, Kitty escapes from the from the pie factory and then she's, uh, you know, jumping and kicking and swinging and jumping in the air. So that was one shot that I did and that didn't really require stepped approach because it was about Kitty being the smooth uh, criminal or whatever you call it. And like, she's like, you know, everything about her is like so, uh, so fluid and the way she moves so that didn't require uh there were probably a couple of other moments where we didn't didn't go for the twos but then most of the action bits uh were in twos and there wasn't a, there wasn't anything surprising except for uh some glitches in the very end where you know layout wasn't picking up the the right version of the camera that we had and uh but we worked through that yeah. so yeah makes sense yeah. uh nick asked I enjoy so much the choreography of the fight sequence with the giant in the beginning of the movie. The camera movements are so smooth and dynamic. Do you know how it was created? It's a combination of creativity and effort from storyboards and animators and layout. I think this comes back to the bad guys shot that we're talking in the beginning. Yeah, it's a combination of, uh, I would say, I mean, I didn't work on that section, but I'm pretty sure uh, there would have been a lot of uh, anim cameras, like, you know, animator controlled cameras in that in that moment and uh, the way it would have worked is that the animator would have animated using the camera and then the layout department would take that camera and then you know take that onto their final shot camera um, so in all these cases you'll see the camera is nice and smooth and fluid but then the action is uh, isn't stepped and this again goes to show that uh, we use the step camera plugin to make sure that our held poses are linked and tied to the camera so there's no jarring so yeah. um i think it's a combination of what layout did as well as what the animators added and, and nick has another question that he was curious about how was this extreme angles creating during the last fight sequence between wolf and puss i doubt the camera is doing all the work and i wonder how much animators went into stretch the character scale the face yeah yeah i did a lot of that um i think a lot of my shots have that and that's one thing that, uh, you know, like I say, this is like um, we approach every shot in a different way, I would say. Like there is animation part of it, but then there's also this layer of adding dynamism. And dynamism is to adding, is about adding this pushed perspectives. Like the places where, you know, your hand is like close to camera and I've uh, really scaled the arms and then the hand that's further away, I've scaled it down. And, and you know, I've scaled uh, the forearms as well, like you know, in a way that it kind of leads into the the, the big fist, uh, and a lot of cheating uh, in terms of um, you know making it look like um, an, an illustration, and also the places where uh, um, Wolf, there's this part where Wolf swings his, his staff and he shoves it at post. So you see that uh, like there's some scaling there as well, like he comes super close to camera, um, and then. Um, yeah, not everything was it was it with the camera. I did use a lower focal length, like usually about around 20 mm, um, 25 mm sometimes. But I think mine in that section, this is something again, like you know, I just sneak these things in there. You cannot really always tell them that, hey, you know what? I'm gonna change the camera, I'm gonna do this, and they'll be like, Hey, what's this guy up to? You know, it's always not good to <laughs> announce all of that, like you know, so just sneak these things there in there. So I, I really lowered the focal length. Like I was using 15 and 18 mm lens 
to really give that distorted feel. And you'll see that one of the shots where Wolf really flies up into the sky with the staff, uh, you'll see that they went further after I the shot was final, I think, in the final IMF or something. So I think it's distorted even further for it to feel, uh, get the yeah. feeling of him uh, you know, shooting up in the air. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, of course, it's a combination of um, distorting the characters to make it look good as well as the camera. Cool. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Yeah, I imagine like scaling the character and stuff. Yeah, and there's a question from Karina. Uh, now that you mentioned, now that you mentioned design, what was the different design styles on the different characters that you needed to keep track of when animating the characters? Um, of course, um, design styles. Um, in terms of Puss, I think um, he. Uh, he was really, uh, he's, he's far more pushed than what he was in the first movie. I mean, if you see some of the images, uh, you see right away that his uh, eye line is very clearly defined and it's not buried with all the fur and uh, even his mouth shapes. Uh, if you see in the first movie, uh, I think um, the mouth shapes are not as pushed and it's like, you know, very limited in its range. We were kind of going for the realism part of it. But I think in this one, you'll see that the mouth shapes all have... Uh, you know, more pushed feeling to it. Um, we we do have these, uh, I mean, the drawings of uh, Puss um, and then the initial um, explorations of, you know, these character designers. Um, we kind of went for more graphical approaches when it came to the mouth shapes. The, the places where we kind of really um, tilt the mouth in a way that it doesn't play flat to camera, it has a slight tilt to it. And it kind of gives you a nice, more graphical read. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, the character designs, I think Kitty kind of went through some changes, I would say. I mean, uh, she's a little different from what she was in the first movie. But it was all about uh, um, keeping her close to the drawings, uh, you know, from the from the character designers. Uh, and Pero as well, like, you know, he comes out of a sock. So that was a part of... Who he was. If you're seeing seen from a size uh, from the side, you will see that he's, you know, you can see the sock, and then he has to kind of feel that he's inside a sock in a way as well. Um, I don't know if it's answered your question, but uh, was that vague? I mean, I don't. Know. Oh, I think I think it answers because uh, yeah. it's like Wolf has a very specific design that you need to keep it like more symmetrical and more like. Strong lines, strong angles, and I would say, very yeah, soft, very smooth. So I would like, say, in terms of this question, I think I would say uh, perhaps uh, Bad Guys is a stronger example because you know uh, we really had to look at uh, them in terms of drawings and you know real illustrations. We were tweaking portions of the face to really make it seem like they look like the initial um, you know designs from the characters or you know something that Jorge had tried. But on Puss in Boots, it's a little more naturalistic approach. Yeah. So, uh, though you refer to the uh, the illustrations, you kind of tend to go with the realism of the movement. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I have the last question pre-submitted here, and then I'm going to ask the chat if they have any other questions. So, the last question submitted was, do you have a morning routine or a productivity routine? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, well, I mean... My mornings are usually chaotic because, you know, I need to get my daughter ready to go to school. And so there's almost nothing I can do there. Um, I One thing that I always do is, uh, uh, I think over the years, is, this is something that I kind of figured out, is that I need to keep taking breaks because it kind of refreshes you that much more. And even while working, let's say I'm working on a section and I've been seeing it, you know, seeing that play over and over and over again. And I sometimes just switch to an article and just start reading it out, you know, something that's not visual, like, you know, just read something and then, you know, probably a story or something. And and then it gives you a fresh perspective you, and your mind is thinking about something else. And then you suddenly open your shot and then you start to really see things. And uh, that kind of really helps me. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I if I'm working on multiple shots, then I make sure that I don't get stuck onto one shot for too long. So I make sure that I, if I'm stuck on one thing, I just leave it aside. 
uh, back in the days, it used to be very hard for me because, you know, I, I used to feel like, hey, I'm struggling. How can I leave this bit? I cannot leave this bit. Like, you know, but then you start to develop a, a larger heart <laughs> and start to say, okay, fine, let go of things. It's fine. You you fail. Let it go. And let's try something. And then in this shot, let's see if I, I can get my, uh, you know, uh, my momentum back. And more, more likely it happens. And there are sections in my shots where, you know, I don't feel good about it. I'm trying to still work my way through it. But then something happens in one part where my body is working very well with my arms and my head gestures are working well. And that triggers my, you know, me to start to implement that in the rest of the shot as well. Sometimes things like that as well happen. So it's very, it's crazy, man. I like to keep it this way. It's not like a very structured approach because I feel that if it's very structured, it tends to get a little repetitive and a little boring at times. Also, there's a, there are a lot of other risks in my way of working. Uh, it's like firefighting all the time, but uh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, Kilabi has a question. At the beginning, you mentioned that you started your career working as more of a generalist. Do you think that more general experience and understanding through this software affects your approach in animating in comparison to those who have only studied animation? Sorry, could you repeat the second part? Yeah, do you think that more general experience and understanding of 3D software affects your approach and animating comparing to those who have only studied animation? Uh, to an extent, yeah, for sure. Because I think uh, I had learned some basics of rigging uh, when I started off, and I think it really helped me understand what goes behind. And I could understand why deformations weren't uniform, and I could try to figure out like you know maybe it's perhaps it's because of that and you can see you can try to link things uh, it gives you that kind of a knowledge i would say uh, you'll know exactly where to tackle things and you'll know what's wrong and where is it going wrong so it gives you that knowledge for sure um, and uh, yeah i mean although over time i kind of lost all of that like i'm like now more or less just an animator because i've stopped doing all of that uh, other aspects uh, many, many many years ago yeah, no, I agree. I started as a generalist as well, but I didn't do like rigging. I was more in like lighting, modeling and stuff. And it does help a little bit you understanding like what is a wireframe, how like modeling works and those things in my case. But I believe I, it doesn't add on my workflow. So it's it's kind of like it helps, but also it's not it's not necessary. Right. Uh, there's one more question from Adriano. Do you teach in any online school? <laughs> I don't. I mean... Uh... If you do, don't say the name because... No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, uh, the, uh, the thing is, I'm currently in the US and I'm on a visa. So my visa doesn't allow me to um, work anywhere other than DreamWorks, unfortunately. <laughs> Perhaps when I leave DreamWorks, I don't know when, but when I do decide to do that i might just think of it but i have mentored in the past and i've helped out my friend who had a small online school back in india we're helping some people out there and uh, uh yeah but other than that no cool yeah well that's that's good to know that you you're, you're open to to teaching which is great a lot of people sure but i don't know how good i'm gonna be because uh, i'm pretty bad at uh, I don't know, like preparing uh, a lecture and uh, de delivering it or something of that sort. Perhaps uh, I feel the best way of learning is through feedback and I don't mean, mind doing that. I might just do that at some point in time, like, you know, giving feedback to people who really need feedback from me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's a great way. Uh, does anyone has any other questions for Prashant? Just feel free to ask now. We're over with all the questions. And let me see if I have anything else to ask. What you're working on is unannounced yet, as far as yes. I know. So we cannot talk about this. Uh, people saying that it would be awesome if you do a mentorship, mentorship, they would sign up. OK. So. <laughs> sure, I mean, I will uh, probably uh, let you guys know. and. Um... It also requires me to make that much of time. Uh, I mean, you know, make that time available. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, this is something that I might just think of doing in the future, sometime for sure. Like, you know, uh, perhaps when I'm yeah. out of DreamWorks or I don't know. 
I, maybe I, along I have the way. a question, and there's one extra question. Um, like a few more questions on the chat. I have a question. That, are you studying anything? Because I feel like after you get some certain experience, and I feel like you're like a extremely good animator. So I don't see. Like, are you still studying animation, or the, there's any other thing that you're studying outside of animation that you think is like it grabs your interest or something like this? Yeah, I've been. I mean, it's like been an on and off thing. Um, I've been wanting to study life drawing and you know uh, illustration and basically just trying to see how I can implement these ideas uh, into my work. On my Instagram, I follow a lot of uh, biz dev artists and uh, you know. Um, and basically, not necessarily animators. I, I don't follow as many animators on Instagram because I think uh, whenever I scroll to Instagram, I need to see some in inspiring images. Like I, my feed is all full of uh, amazing illustrations and stuff like that. That kind of gets me going. Like many of these artists, uh, concept artists, and you know, character designers that I follow have such amazing work. And every time I see a drawing or you know, illustration, I always try to think what's making it work really well. Uh, and what is um, and how is it that is so simple but still so expressive? And uh, you know, trying to question on those lines, and you eventually end up questioning on those lines when you're animating as well. Like you know, what is it that's going to make something uh, simple at the same time um, uh, readable at the same time appealing and enriching? So, uh, just to enhance these kind of sensibilities, I follow artists. Um, it's kind of an indirect learning, I could say, but I haven't really uh, enrolled for a course. Like, um, I did enroll for force drawing. Uh, was that? Yeah, 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 force drawing. Mike Mattesi. Mike Mattesi. Um, yeah, but I've re really not. Uh, it's that uh, initial package that I've taken, but I've really not gone through it as much in detail. Um, I really, I, I really want to also want to learn uh, boards at some point in time. Like, you know, I have a few ideas. And, Probably try to nice. board them out. Yeah. Uh, the last questions we have here is where do you see yourself in six years? <laughs> Whoa, man. That's a very. Um, you can skip this one if you want to. It's a very... Six years. I I don't know. I mean, I've been an animator for 13 years. And um, it's, I mean, I'm very thankful for all the opportunities that I've got. Like, you know, I've had an opportunity to work on some really crazy shots, all varieties of shots. You know, be it acting, subtle movements, or physicality, action. I'm very thankful to have worked on almost all of these. So there's a part of me that's kind of happy. At the same time, there's a part of me that still wants to take on these challenges. Like, you know, there's this particular section that I'm working on right now where um, they really don't know how it's going to work out. They want me to figure it out, like some of the action. And it's like problem solving at the same time you know, like in presenting the idea, problem solving. So this is something that I'm relishing right now. But then once I'm done with all of that, I probably might say, hey, you know what? I'm going to just take a break from animation for a bit and perhaps do animation just for pleasure. Like, you know, like maybe just do that one-off shot here and there and maybe on a bigger scale, maybe think of doing some leadership role. I mean, if it opens up for me. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Like, you know, not having to animate as much, but then... Um, probably helping out a group of animators in achieving something. Yeah, no, that's so, really cool. Um, yeah. And the last question we have for today is, who is your all-time favorite animator or concept art designer? And you don't need to say it's me. You can say the second <laughs> second favorite. <laughs> oh, man, and it's it's so many. It's it's yeah. hard to take names. I mean, I... Uh, it's... I mean, I'm, I'm actually jumbled in my mind right now, so... Yeah, I mean, Borha comes to mind. I mean, I, 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 what, did you did you remember all the drawings you did on Boss Baby? Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. amazing. Uh, I follow him uh, on, on yeah. socials as well. He's, he's amazing. Um, man, yeah, there's so many. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't want yeah, no, <laughs> to take a few things. names and leave out the others. But, of course, animators as well. Like, you know, uh, so many amazing animators and DreamWorks as well that have really inspired me over the years. Um, and I would say DreamWorks is a legacy of animators. Uh, I really, really respect them because uh, uh, they have their own identity in a way they animate. They're not necessarily like Disney animators, like which I respect as well as a lot. Um, uh, but then I really like how How to Train Your Dragon has come out of this kind of a you know legacy. 
um, Crude as well. Like you know, you have you have Fabio, who's like one of the um, the oldest. I mean, not the oldest. Sorry, like yeah, the, yeah. Like DreamWorks for the longest time. Jakub, um, Jakub Jensen. People are not who are not on social media, but um, they're legends. Yeah, that that's a shame because I love their work, and I only met them joining DreamWorks and seeing yeah. their work. There's Dan Wagner as well. So Dan Wag- yeah, yeah. But, cool. Well, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much, Prashen, for coming. Thanks everyone on the stream for submitting the questions and also following up. And my yeah, pleasure. you can my say uh, your your socials where, where to follow you or how to contact you if they want. I know you're on Twitter. We just shared your Twitter. Yeah, and um, I'm on Instagram as well. I'm kind of usually frequent on these two, Twitter and Instagram. Not as much on Facebook or um, on LinkedIn as much. Cool. Um, yeah. And what is your Instagram handle? I think it's uh, Prashant.Kavli. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, bad at. It's, it's, uh, we'll share. On... Let me let me tell you. <laughs> oh, God. So sorry, this is embarrassing. Um, I I will use Prashant underscore. It's Prashant dot ah. I cool. think so. I, yeah. I'm just typing here on the chat. And in. Oh, no, I, I typed it wrong. <laughs> and your Twitter is the same, right? Yeah, I think it's Kavli Prashant. Yeah, it's the same. I remember it. Yeah, cool. Well, that's yeah. all for today. Thank you so much. Uh, everyone is Thank thanking you, so you very much, saying it was great to hear from you. And I agree. It was very, it was very nice to hear all your Thank experience you, and your approach. Thanks My again. And My pleasure, I'll, thank you. I'll see you again soon. And keep in thank touch. You. And thanks sure. everyone for, for showing up. And see thank you guys. You. Thank you. Okay, I, I ended the...